your article uh, of course is uh, you know sort of has a bit of a sarcastic tone and questions the internal workings of the IB and uh, the report that actually you know spoke about the NGOs working in India so your take I think you know much of it is uh, largely based on conjecture the IB is not an organization uh, which works under CRPC it does not have to produce credible evidence credible evidence is something they use this, that, that the IB itself uses so often but it never produces it so when you say 3% of the GDP has been knocked down by NGOs I mean it's a rather far-fetched estimate which runs into some 2.5 lakh crores so if somebody is to believe the report, they have to ask the, fir the first question they have to ask is, where did they get this figure from? The Gopal Subramaniam case is even more interesting. You suddenly find the IB is giving reports on the fact that he meditates for one hour in the morning, so we cannot trust his process of arriving at decision making. I mean, they would have banned Ramanujan from doing mathematics so if he had <laughs> left it to the IB to do such things. So, I mean, this is all just pointless. This is the government using the IB as a political tool and the IB letting it get used in this fashion. Now, you know, today, as we talk today, I think IB is the most powerful, has become the most powerful organization in New Delhi. Right. More than any other ministry, it uh, has been allowed to pass judgment and check the antecedents of defense suppliers. Oh. What the IB does is very convenient. It just files these reports and if the government is cognizant, it's left to the police department to run around and they look like fools.